I think that when people uh, take the test, they often miss very subtle words or concepts. I think one of those things includes upper or lower airway. Our plan today is to help build intuition and also to recognize what's really important on uh, reading a National Registry question. So let's talk first about what the upper versus lower airway is. A lot of times we think of the upper airway as the larynx and above. So if you are in the upper airway, um, the larynx, the epiglottis, the pharynx, um, which is uh, above the larynx, and again, we have the oropharynx, the nasopharynx, that's really the upper airway. The lower airway is largely considered the tracheobronchial tree below the, the larynx, the vocal cords. As that goes down, we have the trachea that splits at the carina to the uh, main stem bronchi left and right. Those go into uh, increasingly uh, smaller airways. The airways become smaller and smaller until they get to bronchioles, very small airways that lead to the alveoli. The bronchioles have smooth muscle that tend to um, constrict that smooth muscle in things like asthma. So for each of the six situations here, describe whether it's upper or lower airway, then predict what abnormal airway sound would be present in each condition. Here we go. The triggers in asthma generally, the most significant triggers are exercise, allergies, and respiratory infections are the things that tend to set off um, asthma. And there are a variety of other things, changing temperatures, cigarette smoke, which probably could go in the allergen category. Um, Aspirin-induced asthma is not particularly common, but it's there. So in asthma, we have a constriction of the bronchioles. Now, the bronchioles are very low in the airway. As a result of that, what happens is we can bring air in, we have trouble getting air out. When we push air through that um, narrowed airway, we get a wheezing sound. So an asthma attack is a lower airway sound and the sound is wheezing. Generally, it's expiratory in the beginning. It might be inspiratory and expiratory towards the end. And if you find a silent chest in a patient with an altered mental status, then you, of course, have respiratory failure, and that is very bad. So, you know, in this grand scheme of things, uh, asthma affects the lower airway. The traditional thing that we see is wheezing. Now, we have a treatment for that. We have albuterol. Whether we are an EMT assisting with a nebula, assisting with an inhaler, whether we are administering a small volume nebulizer, which now many states, EMTs, AEMTs, and paramedics can do, our goal is to open up those narrowed airways. All right, number two, unresponsive patient's tongue has fallen backwards into the airway. Right? If you slept with anyone that snores, you know that sound. And the tongue is the clue that it's the upper airway, just by the word tongue, because it's above the glottic opening that creates a snoring sound. So number two is upper airway and snoring. All right, a young child swallowed a coin and has a partially obstructed airway. Now that coin probably hasn't gone through the glottic opening, but it might be down in that neck of the woods. So generally, uh, that is a, uh, an upper airway issue. Um, and what we'll hear in that is um, strider. We'll generally hear um, an upper airway sign of strider. Now, interestingly, both wheezing and strider are both described as musical. But the difference being is, is that, that asthma and the wheezing comes from the lower airway and the strider comes from the upper airway. The musical sounds come from air being forced through a place that the opening is narrowed, whether it be because of constricted bronchioles or whether because of the coin uh, near the glottic opening that's causing some problems there. 
um, it still um, you know, causes obstruction and it sounds the difference being upper or lower airway. In this case, it is most likely the upper airway and the sound is strider. Number four, a closed airway from an allergic patient eating peanuts. Now, first of all, it's closed, closed. You'll hear no sounds, right? But the closed airway from an allergic patient eating peanuts, the swelling that occurs in anaphylaxis occurs around the larynx and the throat, the upper airway swelling um, that keeps that. And that's, now let's, let's talk about the things that anaphylaxis does. Anaphylaxis um, increases capillary permeability, which means fluids flow out of the capillaries. Normally, the capillaries hold everything in. But in this case, the chemical uh, mediators involved in anaphylaxis let the capillaries become leaky, let fluid come out of the capillaries. And in doing that, especially around the mouth, tongue, and throat, we can then take and engorge tissues with fluid which will create swelling. And in the upper airway, that would probably also cause strider. Now, to be fair, and the way I phrase this, if it's a closed airway, like totally closed, you'd hear nothing. But if it's a narrowed airway, you would hear strider. Now, with anaphylaxis, yes, you probably will also um, hear wheezing. Remember, wheezing is a lower airway, and with um, anaphylaxis, you will probably also get that uh, smooth muscle contraction down there causing wheezing. But in this case, we're looking about the fluid coming out of the permeable capillaries that's filling the airway with fluid and ultimately reducing the flow. That is upper airway and would cause strider. The wheezing that happens with anaphylaxis um, is lower airway and that, that's, I guess that is wheezing. Right, a patient was stabbed in the chest and has a collapsed lung. Well, that's lower airway because it's below the glottic opening. And what's the abnormal sound? The abnormal sound is probably no sound. The area that's collapsed will have no uh, sounds of airflow going through it. And that would be the lower airway because it's below um, the larynx, below the glottic opening. And number six is an unresponsive patient uh, that vomited it has liquid foreign matter in her airway, and that causes gurgling. That is upper airway. Um, it is not, it's hanging around the, uh, the pharynx and the oropharynx, all that junk that we can suction out of there. Uh, and that, of course, is uh, very good to suction that out. But it's in the upper airway. If it's in the lower airway, if it goes down past the glottic opening, past the vocal cords, you know, we can't suction it out at the EMT level. The paramedic level, we could put an ET tube in and try that. But really, um, that would cause a gurgling sound. So let's review this. Snoring means we open the airway. Gurgling means we suction the airway. Strider is an upper airway sound uh, indicating swelling around the glottic opening where wheezing is a lower airway sound indicating narrowed bronchioles leading to the alveoli. Um, and, and the tongue falling backward in the airway we talked about is snoring. What we've learned about the upper and lower airway and the sounds that happen are so significant as far as reading a question and figuring out what's going on in these, in these airway questions. Airway is about 17% of the National Registry exam, not the biggest part, uh, but certainly an important part. And that these sounds and conditions and things that happen as they uh, affect the airway um, is, uh, in fact, uh, very important.